What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about resampling, sample rate, quantizer, bit depth, um, dithering, jitter, filters, resolution, and all sorts of fun stuff. This is uh, something that really fascinates me because uh, I'm, I'm really into the digital stuff. And these uh, the sample rate reduction and bit rate reduction effects that we use, we like to use them because you know, they sound cool, but we're not aware that we've been hearing them almost our entire lives. And I guess, you know, you flip a coin, a sound that you hear um, has, you know, been affected in its sample rate um, at, you know, at some point to, uh, I guess, a perceivable value. And I want to start off by, yeah, just kind of um, going over our explanation and uh, test equipment. What I have is Serum, and uh, Serum is outputting a sine wave. And uh, that's basically its job. Um, it's at uh, two times oversampling, um, so there'll be no aliasing added. And then we have Decimort by D16. D16 makes some fantastic plugins, and we have, you know, Decimort uh, oops, doing things to our signal. And then I have uh, some measuring devices here. I have an oscilloscope by Blue Cat and a frequency analyzer by Blue Cat and then FabFilter Pro Q3 just as, a, as another um, reference, which I'll have like that. So I want to just briefly use something as an example so i'm um, you know you go on to uh, vintage synth explorer yay and we're looking at the sp1200 now the sp1200 is one of those like it's this mount olympus kind of holy grail piece of equipment and it was made in the 80s and it was almost yeah, it was kind of like the very first sampler and it is a highly sought after sound because it has uh, sample rate reduction and bit rate reduction. And it does some wacky things to the sound. And, you know, you listen to a lot of, you know, tracks, a lot of French house tracks and things like that. This was used, it came out in 87, um, eight voice, you know, all sorts of things. And uh, the sample rate is at uh, 26 kilohertz with 12 bits of sampling with, uh, you know, four 2.5 second blocks. So you can only sample up to 10 seconds in this freaking thing, as opposed to, I don't know, on my computer, I could sample like a year, I don't know, <laughs> a year of audio. It's crazy. Anyway, you know, and this is what kind of maybe irks me about these, um, what you, what you look at here, because you know a sample um, rate of the uh, in you know kilohertz and twelve bit sampling is not very descriptive, and you know we can set the sample rate to an arbitrary amount that some you know old school piece of equipment had, and we can set the uh, the resolution to you know I think it was, yeah it was twelve twelve bits, and that's not going to actually achieve anything. There's a lot more going on under the hood with resampling and not resampling, but like sample rate or emulating or, um, you know, dipping into the kind of taste and flair of these uh, old school samplers. And, you know, the, they, the, how it worked was, you know, you would have your uh, audio, right? piece of vinyl or something like that or a cassette or whatever dat and that would be recorded but it would have to be transferred from an analog signal to a digital signal and back in the 80s and early 90s and you know it's only become recent that these uh microcontroller or you know digital to or sorry, analog to digital converters have become fast enough to sample real time audio, um, you know, uh, beyond the the Nyquist um, limit. So these pieces of equipment wouldn't be able to sample as fast. So that's why the uh, SP 
SP1200 had to compromise for a uh, 26.040 kilohertz sampling rate. So that many times a second, so, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, 20, yeah, so it'd be, uh, 20, yeah, 26,040. Uh, That's how many times a second it could sample. And when you do that, you will get aliasing. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we have, uh, let's look at this right here. This is, no, that's not an oscilloscope. That is an oscilloscope, but this is the uh, frequency analyzer. So right now we have a one-to-one -one sort of thing going on. And we have a sine wave, so it's a pure and clean tone. And it has just one fundamental and no harmonics. It's just a sine wave. As we decrease the, uh, the sampling frequency, we will see some aliasing. And that aliasing is caused by, and I'll show you. Actually, no, I'll show you this first. Right, we can see some aliasing there. Right, so right here is aliasing caused by, you know, the sampling and stuff like that. And as we, and this is a pretty low signal, so it's, you know, uh, 217-ish, no, sine wave is 217, so we don't get a whole lot of reflections. But for higher frequency content, I'll show you, it gets to be pretty banana. So it's the same thing. As I increase the uh, pitch here, just with the course, Right, we're starting to get a little bit more. Right, and we have, you know, two of those guys. And let's bring the sample rate down. So now we have... We have a, a lot more um, of these aliasing artifacts going on. And that is because... We have stepping going on i'll show you what that looks like so we got some stepping and it's like ugh, you know what i mean and uh actually i'll show you what it looks like as we decrease it and yeah i actually gonna select a kind of a lower tone so we don't annoy people i'll turn off freeze Right, so we got uh, some stepping there, and that is essentially it. Like the 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 sample rate, the grid, so to speak, uh, causes things to kerfuffle. And actually, one of the one of the better things we can look at is uh, Pro Q three. This is a this is a better uh, look at the actual harmonics here. So I'll uh, bring this down. Right, so that's a lot of harmonics, and that is caused by aliasing, um, things kind of reflecting downwards. And this is what those old um, digital to analog converters did. Now there's, uh, you know, digital to analog, that's just in digital to analog and analog to digital that just go so freaking fast, it's, uh, it's crazy. But you still have to take into account filtering. Um, in a lot of situations and that's why we get into filtering and one of the things that irks me about you know the specifications like this is if you're going to have like the sample rate or the sampler how much you have to explain what else is going on there because they were very well aware of the aliasing that could be caused and mind you we're using a sine wave which is you know like a pure clean tone what if you have anything else really with like a lot of um, uh, with a lot of harmonics, like um, for example, let's go saw wave, right? So yeah, we'll just do an in phase saw, right? So this is a saw wave. And I'll bring this down, so you can see this as like a lot of sine waves. Like holy crap, just imagine a lot of sine waves, a lot of harmonics, and yeah, maybe we'll open up. Um, this again you know what i'll just i'll just leave that there all right so we have a really cool saw wave whatever we don't need to look at it 
We have our saw wave here. And I will unfreeze that. And as I bring down the frequency, more and more of those artifacts from aliasing will bounce back. Right? It gets to be a problem like quicker. So how would how would you mitigate that? I'm gonna go back to my trusty sine wave. So how they mitigated that was they used well they knew their um, sampling rate and they knew that there would be artifacts um, near or like you know above the uh, um, halfway between that. So they would drop. I'm not explaining this correctly. They would drop in um, filters. I'm going, to, I'm going to open up the uh, manual here for the SP12000. Uh, they're talking about the blah, blah, blah. And what they're looking at is they want to get it, like get some anti-aliasing going on. And that was done with a filter. And this filter was employed. It's a very sharp cutoff of the order of 42 dB per octave. And it's less than half the sampling rate of the system. So they would have a filter in there to mitigate that. So when you're in, in your quest to emulate these older machines, you got to put a filter in there or else it uh, doesn't work and uh, it's not kosher. So that is uh, essentially what we need to look into. Um, and that's why these, um, these uh, old school machines had the sound that they did. They sounded darker, they sounded dirtier, they sounded dusty because the um, the bit depth, the sampling bit depth was lower. There was some dithering, which is also another thing to mitigate the uh, the artifacts of um, quantization. You would add dithering, which is noise, to the signal, and then that would make sure that there, you know, it would smooth out the uh, quantization errors and things like that. So let's take a look at the approximation filter. That's exactly what the, the approximation filter is. It is a filter. No, yeah, it is a, no, this is the, uh, this is the filter before, and then the imaging filter is the one after. So there's two filters, and one does something before, one does something after. And the, uh, the images filter filters out things that would, it, it takes into account the uh, sampling frequency. see those harmonics there and it will filter some things out right and you're like oh that's magical but if we have that's really small sir what are you doing but if we have something with a, a lot of harmonics like that saw again we'll do an analog saw right so 11 um, kilohertz sampling rate Right, cleans up that uh, those aliasing, um, you know, artifacts that will occur, and that's what we are looking for. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. My eyes going blurry right now. But yeah, that is the uh, the filter, and uh, yeah, that'll do some neat things. Conversely, this will kind of bring out the fun. It. It does something, and <laughs> for lack of a better explanation, it, uh, let me just look at that. So, the approximation filter, just read out the manual here. It's, a, it's an optional advanced filter which removes part or entire harmonic content uh, above the uh, Nyquist frequency. So, I guess it, um, it, it happens before the, the, the resampling. So it's a filter before the, the sample rate reduction, and then this one is after. So before and after, which a lot of, a lot of really clever people back in the day would, would uh, kind of, you know, employ techniques in order to make these things sound half decent, and that's what it is. So think of it as like, I don't know, 
a low pass. Like think of these as low pass filters before and after. Okay, so one another another thing. I'm just gonna leave the image filter on because it sounds cool. Right. So say if you had like a, a drum sample in there and you did that. That would sound fantastic because, you know, it would make it sound like darker and more dirty and stuff like that, which is what we're kind of all going for. Something that happens here in the digital realm is the clock. And the clock, as far as I know, would operate at, um, at a different kind of speed than the sampling rate. And... When that happens, when there's a discrepancy in the clock, you can get something called jitter. And what jitter is, is the, 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 the sampling rate, the point in time will be offset. It'll kind of, it, it's just jitter. Like just imagine the sample, I'll show you. So just imagine the sample rate. All right, so we got uh, we got our neat little uh, sample right there, and just imagine uh, I'll actually bring this down a bit more. You know what? Yeah, for some reason it locked. What I what I do? Ugh. Anyway, I'll bring I'll just bring it back in. Um, so yeah, that's more too. Ugh. So we'll bring this <laughs> we'll bring this in. Right, so we can see our steps there, right? Right. There's that, but if we increase the jitter, because this is, this is an ideal um, sampling time, we increase the jitter. Right, so we'll have like longer, like this is a longer, and then this one, right? It's like kind of wacky, especially up here, right? It's, like it's all it's all different and stuff like that. And when you have that, right? When you have that at different times, it can basically cause noise. What we're listening to is noise because things are kind of moving around a bit. And yeah, maybe maybe it'll look a little bit better with a sine wave. Right? Yeah, so we can so yeah, that's a sine wave, and we're hearing noise, essentially, and uh, that is uh, jitter. Um, jitter is, yeah, just, it's what makes those drum sounds dusty, and you know, this is a, this is a lot, uh, but I made in a previous video, I made, and I, and I explained that, you know, things aren't just sampled once, they're sampled multiple times you have like another thing of a dad tape like things have this like you know they're, they're oops they're they're sampled so many times down the line that all these things accumulate and you get uh the sound there so yeah um jitter and uh the image filter things like that the image filter you know sounds it's, it's more pronounced with uh, the jitter here It's essentially a filter, and then the approximation filter does some cool stuff. And, uh, you know, there's that. And it, it also stems, I'm just remembering an idea here about, you know, how clever people worked within the, um, the, uh, uh, the limitations of the day. So, yeah, let's, let's give, uh, let's just blast okay so we have we have some white noise here right and what they did when this was uh recorded to tape let's just imagine this is a song here the our ears are more sensitive around this area right in this area we would hear a lot of noise so what they did dolby tape what they did was they actually boosted this frequency right here right around 4k and you know a little bit below between yeah between like one and 4k or what is it yeah 1000 to 4000 they boosted that and that would effectively bring down the noise floor and then when you play it back you play it in dolby mode and then it would bring that down and that's how 
you know, we have, you know, weighted um, noise and shape noise and different kind of dither. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to unfreeze these things. All right, so we get into, well, we have, you know, sampling over time, right? But, and that's like where things are in relation, no, not like where, like where things are in relation to the, the time division, but how many divisions of amplitude do we have uh, during that time? And this is where the uh, bitrate reduction comes into effect. And this is another kind of variable that goes into these effects and, um, you know, things from the past. I'm going to turn dithering down. So right now uh, I'm sampling at 16 bits, like my DAW is 16 bits, you know, and, you know, End, end of story. And this is, you know, pretty transparent. And, you know, if you want to do uh, 24 bits, you, you might want to do that if you're recording something. It gives you a little bit more headroom. But, uh, yeah, this is the the uh, common resolution. And if we look at that vintage synth thing, it had uh, 12, bit, um, 12 bits of sampling. So we can bring that to uh, 12 or any kind of number. And this is, you know, the resolution of amplitude, essentially. And if we look at it, it's actually, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty transparent given our amplitude and stuff like that. If we bring it down, right, we start to get a little bit of noise. And it is noise. Right? There's that right there we don't really see anything because it's kind of so minute oh, we kind of do and uh there's that but then we're also getting this noise here and these are caused by something called quantization errors and it happens you know to with higher frequency content more than um a lower frequency content and i'll actually uh i'll actually try to demonstrate it and I'll just uh, bring the frequency up. All right, so we got a lot of noise there. Looks like it. And let's just zoom in and what we're getting. Damn it. Come on, dude. Ooh, zoom in more. Anyway, we're, get <laughs> we're getting uh, not a whole lot that we can see there. Let me just, um, let me just go with six. What am I doing messing around with poor examples? So this right here is, uh, yeah, so there's quantization errors. So it goes up, goes down, and then there's like, you know, steps that it's like, I don't know what to do. So then it produces kind of higher frequency content or uh, noise. And, you know, I'm falling on my face trying to explain um, quantization errors. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a way better video out there just... Um, forget what it's called but yeah just look up uh, uh you know quantization dithering and myth and then um, fl studio upload the video oops sorry about that um and that'll kind of explain it. what it is, is yeah it's quantization errors so once we get down to you know something that would be kind of unacceptable and mind you this is just with like you know like a very pure and clean tone i'm actually going to Try a saw and zoom out. Right, you got those quantization errors going on there. Very uh, wibbly wobbly, and it's bringing up the noise floor. And how you combat this, and this is pretty freaking clever, I don't know, whatever, but you add in dithering. And when you truncate from 24 to 16, it's a good idea to dither, um, and this will mitigate the uh, noise, and we'll actually see it work. It's like magic. Right, we'll, we'll see these uh, things go down. All right, so uh, the red is... Um, with no dithering, right? And uh, we'll just see it. Yeah. 
and that's a poor example. What it's doing is it's bringing down those awful harmonics and bringing them into the noise floor. And I'll I'll bring this down here. And uh, yeah, there's uh, that one thing I want to mention is the DC shift. And what that does is that um, we'll see it uh, in the steppage here. Let's do a sine wave again. Right, so we we'll, we can we can see that this is the uh, you know the zero crossing here, and the steps are in between it. And what a lot of machines did it, it it would like offset the DC so that the it would it 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 would have to because of the uh, the circuit it wouldn't be able to it would it would be an absolute value. So if we hit DC shift, boom, it just went back, right? Right, so that that uh, step there is you know pretty close to zero. It shifted it down, and that's where you know the uh, that resolution um, resides. And uh, that's another thing that it does. Um, certain um, certain uh, you know, equipment from back in the day would actually do that, and it would kind of shape the sound a little bit that way. And uh, yeah, it's just a uh, yeah, I guess another kind of flavor. More faithful to the original. And it's just, it shifts everything down and it makes the, because it makes the uh, resampling a little bit different. It's just not even a one-to-one -one sort of thing. So anyway, it's all about the filtering and the frequency and any kind of dithering that these um, things did. And you know, the 12 bit, uh, you know, the, the you know, 12 bits of sampling that the SP1200 did is actually pretty transparent. Right? Just a little bit of low level noise, like cassette tape apparently was eight. Uh, but yeah. Um, not too bad. Smooths it out, and uh, yeah, jitter. Even with jitter, that adds a little bit of noise, so the quantization errors kind of don't occur as far as I know. Right. And uh, yeah, this is what you should be running your drums through, moral of the story. Also, another moral of the story is pre-filter and post filter. I want to talk about pre filter, which is uh, entirely separate from, uh, you know, the uh, the digital analog analog to digital conversion that would occur in these old school machines. There would be through the uh, the input, there would be some it would it would affect thing it would affect the audio in certain ways, um, things would be um, low passed or um, even, yeah, even like high passed a little bit with a bump. And that would be fed into the, uh, you know, the machine, like the, the input would go into there. And I'm sure I could uh, make an entire video on this. These things weren't as transparent as they are today. And a lot of the times they would work in conjunction with how the, uh, the, the the sampling frequency would work and things like that. And, you know, a lot of the times it would add um, a little bit of a, a bump on the low end, so you get more bass. And that's why these things uh, sound pretty good, just because they add a little bit of bass. Anyway, that is my haphazard explanation of these kinds of uh, effects. There's a lot of interesting things that go into it and a lot of great people figured out things back in the day and um, you know with the, the, the speed and the, the cost of high performance 
um, Dax, and uh, whatever else there is, microcontrollers and and uh, like super low noise op amps where you need specialized equipment to actually measure the noise. It's a non-issue these days. Um, and, you know, we don't need to really worry about that unless we're purposefully, you know, messing around. But they are, you know, captured in uh, these plugins here, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.